I'm Joseph Franklin McElroy. I'm the CEO of Galileo Tech Media. Uh, and I have been in the content and SEO and technology business since the 80s. So that might date me, but it also represents a lot of experience. Um, I'm also, uh, as a side note, I'm also an artist. So I've done content myself. Um, I'm actually in museums. Uh, and I've had poetry published on the Jumbotron in, uh, in Times Square and, 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 and uh, various, had some books and things like that as well. So I, I know content uh, from a pr producing pr perspective. Um, Galileo has been around since 2014 and we've provided a suite of global clients, smart SEO and wise content services ensuring maximum visibility and organic search and effectiveness in marketing conversions. With locations in New York City and Charleston, our team of SEO and content experts uh, spanning the world offer a nimble and data-driven approach to wise content marketing, encompassing smart, smart SEO, keyword research and copy optimization, technical SEO, link building, cub, content hub creation, and much more. Uh, and we work in very uh, competitive and multi-location industries like travel, hospitality, and re re real estate. And our clients have included Marriott, Ritz-Carlton, Starwood, Travel Leaders, Better Homes and Gardens, uh, amongst others. Read more, more about us at GalileoTechMedia.com and sign up for our informative newsletter. Besides these monthly webinars, which you will find out in those informative newsletter, we run a weekly podcast on Fridays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. We interview leaders, scientists, psychologists, and others who, who lead the way to more AI data science-driven content. The podcast is called Wise Content Creates Wealth. You can find out more, out, more about it at wisecontentcreateswealth.com or listen live on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash wisecontentcreateswealth.com. So uh, that's about us, uh, my little uh, two minute promo. I wanna introduce our guest speaker today. Uh, we have a very close relationship with Bright Edge, which is an enterprise SEO technology platform that helps us manage and, and, uh, and, and, and build our SEO campaigns as well as understanding opportunities for content. And uh, the speaker is Kevin McCormick. He is a senior customer success manager at Bright Edge and has been working clo closely with us here at Galileo for over for the last few years. He's based out of Bright Edge's New York City office and currently lives in Brooklyn with his wife and 16-month-old 16, 16 daughter, Mia. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks, Joseph. Thank you for having me. Excited to, to be here today to, uh, to chat about the page experience update. Thank you. Cool. Uh, I, I think it's a very important thing for us to be talking about since May is when it's going to happen. So do you want to share your screen? Yes, yes, I will. Let me share my screen here and we could jump into it. All right, so let me pull this up here. All right, great. So uh, today we are going to be talking about the Google's uh, page experience update. It's going to be coming up here. So yeah, like Joseph said, um, I'm a senior CSM here at Bright Edge. I've uh, been here about four years um, working strictly with uh, our agency clients. So um, Bright Edge itself, as Joseph mentioned, is an uh, enterprise SEO and content platform. Uh, it's able to transform online content into you know, those those high level business metrics like traffic and revenue and conversions. Um, and so we have about 1700 uh, customers worldwide. We have global offices. Um, like Joseph mentioned, I am based out of our New York City office and currently uh, working from my uh, home office, a.k.a. bedroom here in Clinton Hill, Brooklyn. Um, but we also have our headquarters out in San Francisco, uh, Cleveland, Chicago, uh, London and, and Tokyo and Sydney uh, as well. So really happy to be here really love working with joseph and, and the team at galileo and was really excited when uh they they asked me to be a part of this uh webinar talking about the page experience update and so you know it's when it comes to google algorithm updates it's uh you know we, we go back to 2011 when we really saw the panda update uh roll out and, and launch and there's been several as we can see here from the timeline since then now, the, the thing that's interesting about this upcoming page experience update 
is that uh, which which actually sets it apart from some of the past updates that have happened is that Google is giving us uh, some some good information prior to the launch. They're telling us what the update is going to be focused on, which uh, is is not 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 typical fashion for the folks over at Google. Um, so, you know, I, I think not only does it differentiate this update, uh, but I think it also signifies its importance. Um, you know, that by uh, the sheer fact of them giving us this type of information uh, well in advance of the update itself um, just tells me and, and what I've been talking a lot about with my colleagues here at Bright Edge and what I've been hearing is that it, it is going to be a significant update. And so we definitely want to make sure that uh, our sites are in uh, a good shape and, and, and in alignment with what this update is going to be uh, focused on. So let's let's talk about it. So when is it happening? It's happening in May, right? So now that we're already in April, um, uh, we, we we're about a month away. So it's going to be a May update. We know that much. Um, what is it? And so it's it's really just a, a core update to Google's ranking algorithm, and it's going to be focused on the user experience of actually loading a page. Um, so it's bringing together. Uh, a variety of metrics, which are going to be known as these core web vitals, which we're going to talk about and look at here in just a minute, um, to really form a, a new ranking factor called the page experience ranking factor. So why is this happening? Well, simply put, uh, mobile web performance. Uh, you know, Basically, Google is continuing the shift towards mobile, where first it was the shift to HTTPS, right, and the secure protocol. Uh, then mobile first indexing and now with this update rewarding it's going to be rewarding the the faster loading sites and you know with the more with the you know popularity of mobile ever increasing right ever since the uh, uh you know advent of the iphone which i think really propelled the mobile industry of course you know the mobile search is the future google's seeing that and they they're telling us with this update that our sites uh, must be ready for that. So that's what this is going to be focusing on. So when we talk about focusing on the user experience, what exactly does that mean? Well, it's really broken out into four main uh, topics or categories. So first, it's secure, right? Making sure that your site is, is, is serviced over to HTTPS, making sure you do have that secure protocol in place. Um, Next, it's, it's, it's safe and safety, making sure that no malware or deceptive tactics are being utilized uh, on your site and on your pages. All right, so we definitely wanna make sure that that safety factor is, is uh, in alignment. Uh, next, we're, it's non-intrusive, right? So making sure that you don't block searchers from accessing your site with you know, overbearing pop-ups or interstitials. Uh, so we, we definitely wanna make sure um, that we don't have a large amount of that happening on our site and, and on our different pages. Uh, and then lastly, it's that mobile friendly focus, right? So making sure that your page loads quickly and really making sure that it functions well on a mobile device. So, you know, things like text and button sizes and things of that nature, making sure due to the smaller real estate of the mobile screens, uh, we, we definitely want to make sure that um, that functionality isn't lost and it's still, it's still where it needs to be as far as speed and, and overall performance. So from there, uh, let's actually talk about these core web vitals, what, what Google is, is really going to be focusing on here for this update. And so basically um, the three are the, well, the first of, of the three is uh, what they're calling largest contentful paint or LCP. And really what that boils down to is uh, making sure that the main content on your page loads quickly, whether that's a block of text, whether that's a large image, whether that's a video in the background, right? We just want to make sure that it, whatever it is, we want to make sure that it loads quickly. And the target for that, that Google's laid out, is uh, uh, 2.5 seconds or, or below. So that's, that's the, the, target, uh, the, the target load speed for the LCP vital itself for that metric. 
Next from there uh, is first input delay or FID. Now what this is, is, is when a user uh, uh, interacts with a page, when uh, the first time they interact with a page, so they click on a link um, or, or, or you know, something along those lines, making sure that the page is, is fast to respond, um, targeting 100 uh, milliseconds for, for that particular uh, vital as, as far as the threshold of where we wanna be. <clears throat> And thirdly, for is, is cumulative layout shift or CLS. And CLS really helps measure um, how content shifts as the page loads while a user is interacting with it. So it's uh, really making sure that we are, uh, uh, you, you know, getting rid of and, and not having those potentially, uh, you know, experience killing so-called events, such as when you're on a site and, you know, you're about to click on something and all of a sudden the content shifts and then all of a sudden you clicked on an ad and you're taken somewhere else, right? Which is just an awful user experience. Um, I know, you know, personally when that happens for me, uh, I usually just never uh, go to the site again, you know? So, so we want to make sure that that's not happening. Um, and, you know, for that, like uh, the uh, real attention should be given to those uh, running Java, JavaScript heavy pages and the target for, uh, for the CLS vital is, is less than uh, 0.1 seconds um, as, as far as that goes. So, you know, really just, yeah, how that content is shifting as a page uh, loads while, while users are interacting with it. Uh, let me pause there for just a second. Um, I just wanted to see if there were any questions uh, so far uh, with any of, of uh, you know, related to the core web vitals or just the page experience update uh, as a whole. Do you think that um, I mean, this question is, you know, it, it, they've made a big deal out of it. Do you think that there'll be, what's the industry saying? Is there, is there going to be a lot of uh, people that lose rankings because of this? Yeah, Joseph, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a, a good question. Um, you know, what, what I've been hearing is for, uh, from some of my, uh, my, my colleagues internally, um, you know, it's, it, it's not going to be expected that every single website is a hundred percent squared away for all of these metrics by the time, you know, May rolls, rolls around. But what we've been seeing and hearing is that if we're at least uh, within the 75th percentile, you know, as far as, as far as uh, uh, some of these thresholds are concerned, as far as, you know, making fixes and, and getting things resolved, if we're at least, if, if we're at least uh, heading in that direction, you know, then I think the sites won't see a huge uh, 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 penalty as far as the, the update is concerned. So, you know, now, now that being said, for those that, that are in really bad shape as far as these core web vitals are concerned, um, you know, I think since Google is giving us so much lead time, you know, I think we we can expect to see some sites, you know, take a hit if they're not, uh, if, if their user experience and their, their load speeds aren't where they, they need to be. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, when, when, when this get, when it actually does roll out, but yeah, I think, you know, for the sites that, that are squared away and, and have their page speed performance, um, at, at a pretty good place, um, you know, we may not see a huge increase in performance, but for those that don't have, you know, those things, uh, you know, fixed and, and, and aligned, then I think they will see a larger penalty if that, if that makes sense. So we might not get as, we might not be as rewarded as heavily, but I think we could be penalized uh, even heavier if we're not where, where, you know, we, we, uh, it, where Google's telling us to be. So Tracy is asking, um, is there a place that we can go check for these uh, these uh, core vitals on our on our site? Uh, so the, the the one of the main places to go and check for that would be right in Google Search Console itself. Um, so in Search Console is is uh, under the enhancements section. There's actually they actually have a core web vitals uh, section, so you can check the uh, performance and you know. It get insights into your core web vitals uh, within Search Console, uh, as long as you have that set up for your site.
Yeah, definitely want to make sure to, yeah, take, go in and, and, and take a look at that. Yeah. And, and start to uh, start to take a look at these, at these web vitals. So I think you can move on now. Great. Uh, cool. So then, yeah, talk, I wanted to, we wanted to include some uh, actual steps to, that you could take uh, to fix these core web vitals. If you are seeing uh, some, some issues, if, if page speed performance is, uh, uh, you know, lacking uh, for, for each of the three. So um, kind of run through these, but um, basically for uh, LCP, we have some common activities to address the, the issues there. Um, and that will uh, uh, kind of focus on things like apply uh, instant loading with the, the PRPL pattern, um, optimizing your critical rendering path, optimizing CSS files, um, optimizing image files and compression, um, even optimizing or removing uh, certain web fonts, and then, of course, optimizing or reducing the, the JavaScript um, as well. Can I ask you, what does a PR, uh, PL stand for, pattern? You know? Yeah. Um, you know, to be honest, uh, I'd, the, uh, uh, the actual, uh, yeah, the abbreviation, PRPL, uh, it's, it's escaping me right now. Um, right. I'll... It's kicked me too, and I'm, an, I'm supposed to be an expert as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it says for uh, uh, page load fast and, inter and interactive. It's a way to achieve it. Uh, you can look online for it. Yeah. Um, that one surprised me. All right. Cool. Yeah, and then for the uh, first input delay, so a couple of some, some common activities and steps there would be uh, reducing the impact of third party uh, code, as well as reducing JavaScript execution time, minimizing main thread work and also keeping request counts low and really just those transfer sizes uh, uh, relatively small. And then for uh, cumulative layout shift, um, that would be more related to uh, uh, size attributes when it comes to images. So height and width, um, as well as video elements um, or, or reserve space for those CSS aspect uh, bo uh, ratio boxes. Um, also a couple other uh, good kind of points to keep in mind, never inserting content above existing content, um, except really in response to a user interaction. And then also um, using trans transform an animations um, instead of animations of properties that really will force uh, layout changes and force you know do those things that that uh, you know typically cause the content to shift around as someone's interacting with it. Great. So. Um, yeah, and then, you know, to talk a little bit more specifically to Bright Edge, um, basically there, there are certain things that we can do within Bright Edge uh, to, uh, to help with, with this page experience update and to be able to monitor uh, performance. And, you know, a couple of these are related to our, our technical site audit crawl, um, you know, and, and having uh, specific types of crawls set up as far as uh, a mobile crawl and using the site map and, and things of that nature where we're then able to run it on a, on a regular basis, whether that's weekly or, or bi-weekly. Um, so we have these, these continual site crawls uh, running in the background for us, and then we're able to modify the parameters uh, to more, uh, more narrowly focus on uh, what's going to be important for this, this update. So it's you know, things like slow response time and um, some of the other rules that we can enable within the site audit crawl um, related to image tags and, and the text to code ratio and things like that. Um, because once we have a crawl like this running, we're then able to overlay uh, that, that trended crawl data with those high level business metrics like visits and, and revenue and conversions, you know, to be able to even see how, uh, how those two are, um, you know, essentially uh, related to one another and, you know, are we seeing a decrease in severe errors if those are getting fixed? And then, you know, because of that, are we potentially seeing an increase maybe in visits or conversions, things of that nature? Um, as we're improving the technical site health, is that conversely helping to improve, 
you know, our, our traffic or our rank, uh, things of that, things like that. So more specific to the platform itself, to Bright Edge, um, but wanted to, uh, yeah, at least just, just mention it and how we could and are using the platform uh, to, to help uh, monitor performance overall, holistically, uh, for this upcoming page experience uh, update. Great. Yeah. And then um, I believe this deck will get sent, uh, will be able to get shared uh, afterwards. But I also, we also included some helpful uh, links here in relation to the page experience update uh, itself. And it actually does have links uh, kind of going back to Tracy's question as far as, um, you know, some of the, aside from Search Console, you know, some of the other tools that can be used to uh, uh, drill into performance for page speed and things like that, as far as the page speed test by Google, uh, mobile friendly test, and we've included links to, to all of those things here. Any other uh, questions uh, from, from, from the group today um, on anything related to the page experience though? Any, anything else that folks have been hearing or, or that we're uh, curious about that Joseph or I could, could help with or answer? All right. Well, um, yeah, I guess in, in, in summary, you know, for me, again, I, I do think this is going to be, oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Tracy asked, does Google reviews have influence on rankings? Google reviews? It was. Oh yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Tracy. So when it comes to, to reviews, uh, I guess, you know, specifically on say a Google, my business page, um, yeah, we, we do see that those reviews do have an impact on, you know, how, uh, uh, how you know, our visibility and our performance, specifically in the local three pack, right? Because, you know, if we're getting more reviews and we're getting especially more uh, positive and hopefully five-star reviews, right? And, and folks are actually writing a, a couple sentences about their experience with, with, the, with the business, with, um, uh, you know, the experience that they had. Yeah, that, that does help because Google loves to see that type of user generated content, right? And so the more reviews that a Google My Business page uh, is getting, and, and especially, you know, like I said, are those four and five star reviews, are, are we res responding to the reviews as well? Google does like to see that. Um, then I have seen, you know, an, uh, an increase in performance and visibility. Um, so yes, those reviews can only, only help. Um, the more reviews, the better, I always say, uh, you know, because they are difficult to get. It's, it's, it's not necessarily that we want to, um, uh, uh, you know, necessarily like solicit reviews, but it, it is great to get them. And so, you know, ho however we can get them uh, and, you know, having folks leave that actual content, you know, again, describing their experience and, uh, you know, that, that's really what we and, and Google loves to see. So it does, it does help with overall uh, uh, improvement in visibility um, in yeah. that local three pack. Yeah. I would, I would mention that in, uh, uh, there is a number of businesses where you can ask for reviews. Um, yeah. So for example, if somebody stays at, I have a motel in North Carolina, if somebody stays at a motel, you know, after the, they leave, you, you say, you send them a thank you note and say, Oh, don't forget to review us. Yeah, um, and so a lot of service businesses, hospitality, you know, small businesses, you know, even even um, you know uh, some bigger businesses, you know, um, you can ask you can ask reviews, and it's a good practice to do that because those businesses are especially affected in the search engine rankings by reviews. Agreed, agreed, Joseph. Yeah, good point. No, I, yeah, yeah, it's it's it, it is perfectly fine to to do that. And yeah, those reviews do go a long way. So yeah, we definitely want to want to get as many as you can. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I might point out that, you know, the, the, you, you bring up a good point, Tracy, there is a lot of different ranking signals and things that go into Google's algorithm. And so, 
you know, page experience is going to be just one of them. And we still at this point don't know how incredibly important it's going to be, though we think because Google is giving us so much advance warning, it's going to be a big signal. It doesn't mean that you can't still rank if you have bad technology. <laughs> no, there, 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 you know, there, are, there will be many cases where uh, you know, you can be 50%, but you're, bet you're better than the other people in the game. And then the other ranking signals will get you up there. That's right. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that, too. You know, it's it, this is um, kind of the, the hot the hot button topic for right now. But there's still so many there's still other factors that are that are very important, too. And yeah, like the reviews, like the actual content on your site. Right. And creating, you know, organic, unique content uh, on your actual site and um, things of that nature, the on page elements. Right. Page titles, metas. Those are always you know, those are still going to play a large part in the overall ranking of, of the site uh, as well. So yeah, we definitely don't want to neglect those, even though the focus, you know, uh, you know, these last couple months has been on, on, you know, this page experience update and page speed performance, but yeah, we always want to, uh, we definitely don't want to neglect and we always want to go back to basics, if you will, as far as the uh, uh, content goes. So yeah, always good to keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for, for people that with smaller sites like WordPress-based sites, there is a, you know, there's a number of things that you can do to actually start preparing the plugins that are available. You know, there's things that will minimize, uh, you know, the uh, JavaScript. There's, there's things that will optimize your images so that they are, they're smaller. There's, you know, a lot of, um, you know, just, uh, you know, you could install a cache. There's, you know, things like a, mm -hmm. Uh, and you can install a, what's called a content delivery network. It'll make your content be delivered up faster. Um, so uh, that are very inexpensive. We do that for a lot of our stuff. Um, yeah, so there's things like StackPath and Key, uh, Key CDN, which are content delivery networks that help to deliver things faster. Um, um, so um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's very much possible to do yourself, do it yourself, optimizing you know, the speed of your pages of your site. It's just a little bit of research and finding plugins that would, uh, that would do it. Cool. Well, uh, any more questions? Well, thank you, Kevin, for providing us some insight into what, uh, what's happening out there. It's important to know that, uh, that this is happening in the next month to give you guys a little time to go and, um, and uh, see if you uh, if your site in Search Console was meeting, you know, the in, in the seventy percentile for um, for uh, search engine uh, for web core vitals. Yep. Uh, search Search Console is a free tool that you can add to your site if you don't already have it. You can also integrate it with your Google Analytics. Uh, it's a pretty important tool to have. Google will tell you a lot of what's wrong with your site inside of Search Console. Mm -hmm. messages and things like that. So if you don't have it, it's pretty necessary. Um, and uh, so, uh, again, thank you, Kevin. Uh, we will be having a monthly webinars. If you sign up, uh, uh, well, because you signed up for this webinar, you'll get notified of other webinars. Um, and uh, that they will be uh, all about things like wise content, smart SEO, and, and hopefully giving you advance warning on things happening in the world that might affect your business. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you much. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Joseph. Have a good okay. rest of the week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.